Welcome back to the Raise Up Podcast. I'm Athena Grimm and this is Charlie. Charlie Grimm. <laughs> yes, and we're so glad that you're here to join us. Make sure that you check out our website if you found us on another uh, podcast uh, channel, uh, raiseupmindset.com. We'd love to hear from you. We've got an area there for you to ask us some questions or to comment on YouTube. So absolutely. And, and we're also starting a new thing where we have takeaway raise up sheets after each podcast. So that would be something that if you wanted to go deeper into what we discussed, we're, we're offering that. So check that out on our website as well. That's so new. I don't even know about it yet. <laughs> well, today, Charlie and I wanted to just share uh, an experience that we we have been in the process of overcoming that has been a very personal experience and uh, it involves financial vulnerabilities within our family and our business. So you want to tell them what happened? Yeah. So about a month and a half ago, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, end of like, July. Yeah. In July, um, we uh, got a phone call from our bank and uh, basically said, ask, first they didn't contact me to actually contacted you because you're my secondary on it. And uh, it was our business accounts and that asked if I was in California, if I was with yep. you and we said, no, we're in Alaska. And Athena started going thing. She was actually Charlie with you right now. And he said, yeah. So she handed me the phone and we were actually looking at a new property on Big Lake. We we're looking at one of our friend's properties that just got through being built yeah. in the process of it. And I, I thought it was kind of weird. I was like, why don't you guys call my number? And they were actually one digit off. And so talking to him from there, it sounded like somebody got a hold of my identity. And, um, yeah. you know, about a week prior or two weeks prior, we didn't, re I, I yeah, it was about a week prior. We got a letter from the IRS saying that our information had been breached. But yeah. That's all it was. Through it was just IRS. like, Hey, by the way, <laughs> like, you know, they don't take enough of our money as it is now that they were breaching our information out to people. And there was no like offers of life lock. There's nothing to offers or anything. Yep, it, it was just like, Here Hey, you go. Just this want to might want to be watching this, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? So, um, after digging down, um, of course, you know we work with uh, some of the header people up in uh, in Denali. Well, tell them what happened. Well, with... so basically, a, a gentleman walked into a, a branch in I think Laguna Beach was it? I yep. think it was in LA Laguna Beach area, and um, had an ID, Alaska driver's license, supposedly, uh, and then had his picture with all my information on it. And he had said that either a laptop or something happened. He was trying to gain access to my accounts, but he didn't have all the account numbers. So as he went through it, she did her due process and checked him out and started giving him account numbers. And then he started asking about account balances and mm -hmm. what was in them. And we were luckily enough to have some passwords on our account that talked about, um, well, if anybody wanted to get gain information past that point had to come up with some passwords. And we regularly set passwords on different accounts and. Just I mean, different services. Yeah, different services, totally. And so the, he couldn't come up with it. And so basically... Uh, he got he, some of the information, but not all of it. He got all the accounts, what were our accounts, but he didn't be able to get the balances of some of the accounts. And I think some of our major accounts that had some of our larger sums of money in it, mm -hmm. uh, he couldn't get. And then when she asked him about it, there was this hesitation, like this panic look. And luckily it was more of a seasoned uh, teller that was there, um, a customer service agent. And... Uh, he said that he thinks he had him in his car or something in a notebook. So he took off out of the branch and got in his car and drove away. And that set up some big red flags. So yeah, they started doing some research, it. Yeah. got a manager, got everybody that's involved, got uh, their security services, which would be, I, I'm not sure the division's called, but uh, somebody that has to do with uh, fraud investigations. And they ended up calling us and they're like, well, how am I know I'm talking to you? You know, how am I talking to somebody else? Yeah. So we had to do some backgrounds and who each other was. And then we felt comfortable with it. And so I said, hey, I'm going to call one of the vice presidents of the bank here that we deal with on a regular basis, Tara. And I called Tara up and I just left a message. And then not more than 15 minutes later, Tara called me. She was made of the branch. She put a freeze on all our accounts immediately, was able to stop things. No theft was uh, uh, attempted on, at least our money it was, but definitely gave us some great advice on what we needed to do and what we needed to go. And um, we definitely shut down the accounts immediately. Athena jumped in that, that not as I am a great in that, that's not my strong suit. So we, immediately had to, I mean, you talk about for everything for AHAs that we got into, debts that come out of our well, cards. We had, and... It wasn't just our 
personal or business accounts was also our personal so there ended up not our personal more just me i was the one who was identity theft i don't think you were you're on all of the accounts that i have and i'm on all the accounts that you have so the um the understanding that i received from the bank was that they received all of the account numbers that you were on including the kids so the identity theft was my identity was yes. lost, but it was we were joint account holders on everything, our credit cards, everything that we do. So all the 19 accounts that we had with the bank on that one particular bank, not other banks that we were with, was compromised. Yes. And uh, being that it's a branch now that's not just in Alaska, they were able to go to a branch outside uh, the Alaska branches here, and they were trying to get identity. So. You talk a whirlwind. I mean, as we're in the middle of closing on uh, one house up in the hillside, we're getting ready to um, buy another house in the, uh, in Big Lake. Like all That's these wheels. That's not the time to have your credit start to like. We wanted to make sure that we were in a. Well, I guess let, let me take it back a minute. So I remember that morning, and I remember thinking to myself, "Okay, well, the good news is," and then I started on with my trail of thinking. This is a good thing, this is a good thing, this is a good thing, because I didn't want fear to creep in in any of this aspect because they technically, they've got my information, but it was caught soon enough to where they didn't get any of the money in the in the accounts. So the theft was our information right now. Yeah, your identity. My identity and then our information for both of our joint accounts and all of the accounts we have, even all the way down to our kids. I mean, they had our kids' accounts because yep. we're on those too. So the bank was amazing. The bank totally took into it. They jumped into it. They started setting up new accounts. It was a weekend. They opened up some accounts. Anything that was coming through, they were automatically clearing for us before they would clear it or not clear it. I mean, they were super helpful. Um, we ended up dropping some accounts because some things that we had held out that we didn't really need anymore. So so we dropped it down to a lesser number of accounts. Uh, They started to open those up. Of course, you have to go through all the docu-signs, all the things. But please understand what we're talking about this thing is like, this is a, this has happened to everybody. Like the days of somebody coming to rob in your house are pretty much over. The the amateurs are still doing the amateur stuff. The professionals are going after the big stuff. I mean, they kind of got away with a lot of different things between payroll caches, between uh, AP accounts, between our main accounts, everything that was going in there, our mortgage accounts, our, all the things that we had going in there. I mean, it was a pretty heavy lift to, to change that. And I remember thinking about all this stuff and uh, my wife's on the education committee for the National Limousine Association. And I told my wife, I'm like, you know something we could do and, and something that's probably happening to other friends of ours and people probably in the industry too, is that we can make this a topic and how we could prevent some of this stuff and not just prevention, but like, like having double and triple passwords, having different accountabilities for our banks because just having a little don't having layer. one password that's going to be you know your major passwords changing those up once in a while. So I mean, there's so many different things that we've learned in this that we could actually take back as tangible things to bring to other people. And I called Athena one day and I'm like, uh, this is shortly after I'm like, and she I know she has her board meeting with the NLA on uh, on Wednesday Thursday, Thursday mornings. mornings. Yeah, it's like at 7 a.m. Alaska time. Thank you guys. I'm waking our sleep up, but I know it's 11 in East Coast time. But um, I said, you know, you should really bring this up to the National Board. This is a topic that I think everybody can touch on. It doesn't matter how big your company is. It doesn't matter how small your company is. You're compromised. You get one social security number and that's it. I mean, like they have my info and this is something I have to immediately we had to start defending, we had to start making sure protecting it. And it wasn't even about like, I didn't feel like I was on the defense. I knew that we we had to keep that general operating account open, but I kept the balance really low. And we were just monitoring it because all of these ACHs come in from our customers and then we have some bills that go out and then, a lot of the expenses that we we spent or a lot of the expenses that we pay are on our our points cards and so then you go through the process of setting up a new account within your credit card and then you're doing the micro deposits me, and then that takes a few days let me days. clarify a little bit too um our credit cards were not compromised um it was the nothing. cash. <laughs> it was it was the main bank accounts where we send our credit card payments yes. and all the other stuff that comes out of those money. So when Athena says that, it's like I just want to be clear, we weren't compromised with our Alaska Air, or Airlines or American. All the different airline card cards that we carry are American Expresses. Those things were compromised. What was the hard part was <clears throat> is 
reestablishing the new accounts for those. Yes. Our WEX fuel, all of our fuel card systems, that was probably the worst. I mean, that was probably the one that more heavier lifting ones that, you know, we had been with them for so long that they were so used to it and they just, they weren't getting it. And we had to redo it time after time again. And that on, took like three, um, almost, three or four times yeah, three for or us four to do weeks. it all the way to fifth. And I love, and, you know, and WEX is a great fuel system, don't get me wrong, but they're like, we have such great notes. We'll be able to see all this stuff. I'm like, well, you should be able to see we've done this three times now. You know, this is like at two o'clock in the morning, our fuel cards are not working for our employees. And that, that's not a good feeling for them, yeah, especially on a 24 hour day. Of... So we're like, hey, you got to immediately turn these things back on right now. Oh, not a promise. We'll get them turned on and we should have this detailed by Monday. And then next Saturday, we're in the same thing. And so when I tell you the defense of it, when I was, I wasn't playing defense, I felt like I was, I was, um, there was somebody trying to break into my fort my area, the, my, yeah. my kingdom. And I was playing defense on this, trying to get them out where I'm saying, I'm only gonna get you this much knowledge and this is it. We are switching gears. We are switching account numbers. We're switching all this. And then in the meantime, Athena is like when she says micro deposits, like when you set up a new deposit, you have to put in a dollar or 50 cents or- They'll deposit a, a penny deposits and then you have to confirm the accounts. And so we have- This is their security versions to make yes. sure that we're not doing the thing, same thing. So everybody is on this like, like making sure we're who we are and we're making sure who people are. And then we were getting crazy phone calls. Like, this is not our bank. You know, this is like things that you get these crazy things for. And like, we got the bill for $75,000 that we were passed through on this bill. And Athena's like, she sends it to me. I'm like, she's like, hey, make sure we don't pay this. This is a false thing. I'm like, oh shoot, I already sent the check. Yeah, you, know? you were being, I you're trying, trying to, be to be funny. But you know, I mean, when your organization gets to a certain size, you're gonna see all different areas of like financial vulnerability. And one of them is we get random invoices with random amounts for people that we don't know that are just like seeing if we'll just happen to pay an invoice. Yeah, and see if it slips by the uh, The account the payable and, uh, clerk, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's just one area. It doesn't have to be as drastic as you, you have an ID that's um, manufactured and they've got your bank accounts. Like, yes, absolutely. The process for us was we, we put holds on everything and I worked to make sure that accounts receivable switched over all of the incoming and accounts payable was uh, switching all the outgoing. But that also takes time because then like Charlie mentioned, there's a process that each entity has to verify that it's actually us that's requesting the change for the bank account. And you know, one of the most important things that you need right away is, is a verification of deposit letter from your banks showing that you're on the account, that this is the number, because a lot of those um, companies are gonna want something on bank letterhead that says this is your account, and this is who's on the account, and this is the business name. So I, I got those right away, and we just went to work to start switching stuff over. And thankfully, we, we left that situation without losing any cash, but it did take quite a few man hours to get everything to the point that we're at now and Lots we're still we still have a few a few things that still are waiting to get switched yeah there's some things out there that you just don't realize you know everything that you really had connected to those ones and then all of a sudden you know a company or somebody we haven't used for quite some time all of a sudden we had some billing with them and then they send it to us and like hey i yep. cliff Surprise. one of our ones yeah hey you just like hey i got this letter it says this account's closed is everything okay and i'm like Cliff, let me explain what's happened. And it's really nice, our letter, our bank wrote us a letter stating everything that we were compromised and all this other stuff and please work with us. And we were able to use that just to say, listen, we're, we're not, there's nothing wrong with us right now. We're just besides identity theft and it's happening everywhere. I mean, it really is. And I could say one of the things I told Athena right away, I was like, uh, when I talked to the bank, one of the banks said immediately, it's like, did they offer you guys any kind of assistance or help with any of this when the IRS had this breach? And we said, no. And she's like, we would have to offer you guys like LifeLock for like the next 10 years. And I've always heard of LifeLock and immediately we got onto LifeLock, I think within that first 24 hours. Well, I hours. was looking at what, like we, we knew we needed some kind of a notification when somebody was looking at, like, Charlie has some My credit, credit score, like apps that he looks at that will tell him like alerts, but we needed something that was going to be leveling up so that we could actually see if somebody's trying to tap our credit to open up a new account 
or, or whatever. And it wasn't reasonable in this time frame to lock our credit report because we were closing on new properties and we hadn't closed yet. And so it was like, well, what can we do here? And so, yes, after doing some research over the weekend when this whole thing happened, I settled on LifeLock and I'll tell you, even the docu-signs that we are signing now for closing on properties and other business transactions, we get a notification every time something verifies our identity. As soon as I hit a receive and send, like I can guarantee within the next 10 seconds, I get a ding on my thing about LifeLock yep. tells me that, did you verify this? And really, I mean, um, I've heard of people talk about it before, but for the price and the investments and a lot of your credit cards give you deals on them that are there, it was well yep. worth the money. And I always feel like, having that peace of mind, knowing something's going on. And it's just, it's better for me because Absolutely. I, I, I want to know. I want to know somebody's not going to go put in a loan or buy a car because- Well, I want to know if somebody is actually attempting. Like it's not, yes. it's like it's an attempt. It's not even a real thing. It's, I mean, that FICO thing would tell you if somebody was running your credit report, but- well, it told me other things too. There was there was other things that totally balances or things that went up or things that went down. There was other some ones. There were some alerts if that anybody was ever late or something ever happened too. So it did, but it was more after the fact. Like mm. I felt like LifeLock was more like proactive. on it and proactive. And the more information you give them, the more they are. They keep finding some of our other properties. Like, hey, we just found this property it's under your guy's name too. Is this your property? And then they said we're building that into the library now, so we'll make sure we're monitoring this one too. So. You know, um, not knowing what we didn't know is, yeah. a, is, is another thing. You don't know what you don't know. You know, and another piece that came up too was our line of credit. They can't just shut that down and reassign a new number. So one of the layers that we did with that was is we have a, there we have a process where there's a message that's sent so that there's a there's document a process in for writing. The process. Yes. There's, there's several yes. ones. We're not going to say exactly what happened, but we definitely added two or three more steps to that process yes. than it was just basically what we would be able to do is you probably call them and tell them what's going on. And it would be a little bit easier now if we don't have the people that normally know us, they see step by step what's supposed to be what's doing. What's in the notes on that yes. account. And so it's, it's something that that's another piece that you need to consider is how, what is, what process do you need to put into place to have like a double check system? And it's not just, hey, calling up somebody, especially this day and age where AI can make anybody sound like anybody. And you know, we, we had previous hacks and stuff like that before, but when I remember Christina, Somebody clicked oh, on a phishing and, statement. Or yeah, and just somebody said, said or I said, hey, I, I can't text you, I can't call you right now, but will you please transfer this money over? And and, and We get the, those all the time. It's so funny, and, and the, the, there is, I'm, I'm not a very good speller and things like this, so I would, and I wouldn't put the commas, I just put straight text out to somebody really quickly or something like that, or voice it. And uh, they were like, Charlie, this is so well written. We knew this wasn't you. And I'd laugh about it. I'm like, you know, that's not me. I would have been like, hey, yeah. take care of this immediately right now. And, you know, I would give them some kind of command that they knew it was coming from me. And so um, this is nothing new, but this is huge. I mean, and if you haven't seen the movie, The Beekeeper, I mean, a little bit more dramatic in that movie it was, but literally there is teams of people out there in other countries or other places that are are hacking people and taking everything. And, and it doesn't mean that you won't get it back. It's just timeliness and everything else that might screw up and how your credit can be screwed and how your business can be affected. And I mean, all the way from fuel cards, I mean, all the amount of money that we do in fuel per week is, you know, and then the $10,000 range a week of fuel. So you know, it's huge. <laughs> one of the more inconvenient things that I know we had to like work through was one of our credit cards just couldn't like get when when it happened that weekend like the issue happened on a friday and then they froze the account and then like our payment was getting auto drafted and it didn't get caught in time so then it was like drafted on, a, on an account that was held and then that flagged this and then you couldn't do a payment online anymore and it just created all of this extra drama around and when I said it. the drama is it's their extra security yes. things too it's like they want to make sure that they're secured and everything to do it, even with our credit history and how good we are with payments and how we have all these auto drafts. It was, it was some talking to get through some of these people and letting them know yeah. really what happened. It's a real thing. And, you know, I'm sure they've dealt with this in many cases before, but just like them, they're protecting themselves too. So 
it seemed frustrating on our part, but I can tell you that I'm sure they're taking the precautions and the procedures just like we are because somebody, how do they know we're who we are? Right, I mean, right. all the verification texts that we get and this, would you give us the password? Then would you do this? I'm like, and holy tamale, you know, I just, I'm just trying to give you guys money right now, but they want to make sure they're getting the right money before they open those lines up because, you know, we don't usually use our full lines or anything like that. So it's, it's, it's a process. You know, and so I would say the takeaway from the entire experience was number one, if somebody gets a hold of your information like that, or or they've taken your identity, one of our good friends who is in um, bank fraud, he was like, you need to file a police report in the city that that this event took place, so that there's a record somewhere that this has been a thing. Because it doesn't always, there isn't always an, um, it isn't always allowed, like since it was done in another state, it didn't actually happen in Alaska, the, situ the situation. So he's like, they may not allow you to file a police report in Alaska because it actually happened in California. And so that was good advice. And then one of the things they did do at the bank, and I want to take part of that, they actually called the police officers. They had an identity theft. Since there wasn't a theft, it was more of an identity theft, but they definitely made the police report. They definitely had photos. They had great pictures of the person. They put out locates and they actually were able to, I, I don't know if they've ever apprehended the person. We've never been there, but there is like a facial recognition of this person going around. Yeah. So hopefully in the future, especially with AI and everything else that's there, that somebody's gonna notice this person or he's gonna get picked up and they're gonna notice that there's some stuff going on with this. Yes. But I'm sure that's a very low level person. I'm sure that person is not anywhere near where the the mastermind of this whole thing. Yeah, and, I, and I'm thinking about that. It's the other piece is staying cool. Like, you're going to be talking to a lot of different people who are just trying to get the job done for you. And it's really easy after you've talked to the 15th person about this one card issue or this one, one transfer that you need to like move over to really lose your cool. And so it's, it's like remembering that like, Hey, this, just happens to people and they're just there to help you. And your partner too. I, I can tell this from for frustration of my part and Athena's part, like when Wex called the third time, she's like, would you deal with this? It's like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, Athena, they're not gonna wanna talk to me that you have all the information. But it's it's the frustration of our sub. Like we've done this, we've filled out the form, we've given you the new account number, we've done this. And like, I probably wasn't as cool as I could be at one o'clock in the morning when dealing with it, seeing our fuel cards were shut down and things like this. And we had to deal with this. I'm like, listen, this they is were very time. willing to turn them right back on and they apologized, but I would get this email and, and it would be like, Hey, we saw that you, your payment did not clear or whatever. And I'm like, I'm looking at the bank account and they absolutely are clearing like, but, we could see the money's being taken out, but they took it out of the wrong account again, not the one that we gave but it was them. Still paid. The, and we and it still paid, but like somehow in their system something was yeah, not right it, flagging. They're right. a large organization Huge. and that's the other piece is it's like their team members are working to get it figured out and um but yes, it would be Alaska's four hours behind East Coast and so when stuff starts rolling downhill, it's still really early in the morning here. And yeah, there was that one moment where I was like, look, it's 1 a.m. I just need you to call them and get the cards turned back on. Because I knew they would turn them back on once they looked at the account. I'm sure there's some automated stuff that happens. Once the system's triggered, it sends out an automated email because it did look like a template email. Uh, I just did not want to have to deal with Wex one more time. And Charlie was willing. He called I to, and... I did. I had to come back and get her up and ask her some of the questions because I didn't know all the information. But... I guess the message I have on this is that it, if somebody is so frustrated to the point that they just don't feel like you talk to it, try to do the best you can for your partner, your business partner, your wife, whoever else it is, and try to do the best job possible because she's put me in a few of these situations lately in this last week or two and a couple of weeks that we've had that it's not the right person for the right seat, but it didn't matter. I knew it wasn't and I did it regardless. He was and, more about holding the space for me in that moment than it was about him being fully equipped to do it. And that, that was absolutely the gesture that I just needed to see in that moment because at one o'clock in the morning, it wasn't that I was frustrated, I was tired. Was frustrated. And I didn't wanna deal with this too. BS at 1 a.m. when I was tired. Mm -hmm. 
And I was like, can you just, like, I got the last two rounds. <laughs> I felt like it's like back in the day when we would pass the babies, you know, mm -hmm. can you just please take her for an hour, you know? Um, and, but that was nice. And that, that is something that I think if you're going through this season and you're dealing with this, that you have somebody that you can tap in and out on. I wasn't, it was okay that I, I took, you know, most of it, but the one o'clock in the morning email ping was just like, really? And I, I tell you, most of it, she took 99% of it. I, I had a very small part. I was able to contact with some of our local banks, talk to some of our local people that I, we're friends with, that we have made friends, that we've had business relationships with, and be able to tap into those people and really talk yeah. to those. And that, that was more of my part. I, I'm not the electronic person. And, and you know, and, and but when I saw she was, she was tired and fatigued and just, I was like, okay. I'll do it. I, I know this is what it's yet, but I'm willing to do it because I know that was what she needed to hear. And um, and I, so I was there. But when you look at that, just really, and then, you know, the, just document everything. Everything you do, document. I mean, just write down on a tablet, write it as something you're going to have a documentation when you did it, what forms you filled out. Because when you're talking to somebody the second or third time, it's definitely helpful. They might not have as good of notes that Wex has. Yes, and, and you know, just want to make sure that you're, hey, on the 27th I talked to Tina, whatever her name is, and this is what she told me to do, and I did those forms. Is there anything else I can do that make sure we're not doing this? And usually they have some kind of record keeping, especially yeah. when you're talking to fraud departments and things like that. They're really good about keeping notes on it, and it's the better notes that you keep. You guys like, I don't know, I just called them at two o'clock yesterday, and. It was three days ago. It you wasn't know, yesterday. You just, you really want to have that stuff dialed in. I just would ask them to send me a confirmation email. And that was the easiest way for me to keep track of who I was talking to who with. And for the most part, I didn't, I didn't get any pushback on that. And, and the emails came in right as I was on the phone with them. So there's, uh, and it, and it wasn't just me that was handling this. We do have a, an accounting team here that absolutely was a large part of sending out notices, filling out new ACH forms and things like that. So it wasn't just me alone, but I was the one who was looking to make sure that even today in my accounting meeting, it was like, hey, I see we still have three stragglers who are depositing into the old account that we got to follow up on. So yes, it was absolutely an interesting scenario. And it brought us to a place where we just need to be a little more vigilant than we are. Charlie and I have really focused over the years on uh, how can we keep it kind of close to home so that we don't step into a place where we're being um, embezzled or that there's theft among us. And so far it's been working. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't had any catastrophes like some of our friends have had, but we're all susceptible. And just taking some simple practices like extra layers of passwords or um, extra. double checks. Look yeah. at the accounts once in a while. You know, just look for look for the abnormalities. You know, we usually have same things that usually come out every month, and it might be a little bit differences. But if you see something pretty major, you want to you want to address that immediately. Uh, and I, I, one of the mites that we noticed when the accounts was upside down because it was out of a different checking account because all the checks that the bank gave us had the same name on it, but just had a different account yeah. number. So just catching that right away and be able to let our bank know, and they understood. They, they're really good about it, but just being the due diligence and looking at it. And, and you know what? Um, looking at your credit history and what's going on and, you know, for the small investment of four or $500, whatever the life lock costs us per year, it was like, ugh. The best yeah, that was a no-brainer. And then, you know, the other tool that I used that I used before all this happened for our personal accounts is I just have a Rocket Money subscription. And Rocket Money will literally send me a notification if one of my utility bills is higher than last month. And if there was a larger purchase that was made, it, anything outside of the norm, it flags it and it's like, hey, you need to take a look at this, take a look at this. And so that has been a really interesting tool that even like my daughter decided to adopt and she doesn't have the transaction sizes that we do. But the point was, is that it's tracking her expenses and it's helping her to get in line with a tighter budget so that she's aware that, hey, if she goes to the coffee hut, you know, 15 times a month that she knows that that's her coffee budget is, is, you know, $200 a month. And does that make sense for her with her goals? You know, so there's, there's all these little areas that it's not just financial vulnerability, but 
it, it's like I think it's, it's awareness. Intentionality. intentionality. Being intentional. Intentionality Absolutely. of what we're doing with our, our resources. Remember, this is our money. This is our resources. This is our credit. This is what we've worked to get Which to. Which equals right now. our lifestyle. Amen. So, yeah. So that's, that, I guess that's the whole tool and the trick is what we're trying to tell you is that this is real. This has happened. You hear it about other people, but until it happens to you, it's like, holy tamole. And I'm glad Athena's kept good notes because I think this is going to be a really great topic. And I think how we can help other people as again, was what we're doing is telling our life story to you guys, telling you how you could prevent some of this yeah. stuff. And this is just easy steps that you can sit down with your spouse or just as yourself or your business partner and really start to protect yourself now. I mean, if you don't have passwords set up, if you don't have double and triple authentications processes, these are things you want to be There's calling your bank up right now. There's an unsurmountable amount of tools that each bank institution has that if you just ask them like, hey, how are you protecting me from, from, from theft? Or how, what are some of the things that you offer that will protect me from theft? That maybe I've been a user for 20 years and I just didn't get the memo that we had all this new cool stuff that, that we was available to us. And I'm sure your credit cards and some of your insurance yep. companies and all the other stuff that it has there that protects you on this stuff. But if we don't know, we don't know. So you have to start looking at it. And I'm sure if you Google up some things and you look at some different people, they're going to give you guys life tips that's going to be on there. These are things I think you should take advantage of right now. Like, I mean, like today like i'm not messing around this is yeah this is your life and i've heard so many people get hacked it's took them years to get things back it's held them back from purchasing vehicles it held them back from Ruin buying their homes credit. their credit has been uh, you know a perfect credit all the way through and it ruined it and then they had to show all this history it came back and it just sets these red flags that we could do for a very minimal cost and so. this are automatic systems that you set up and they just notify you so absolutely yeah. well we if you're still on a flip phone this is not going to be a yeah. very good thing with you this is this is post flip phone you have to have a laptop an ipad you have to have a smart design to make this happen but you can make small changes now absolutely and i i know that there's somebody listening to this that is like i've been thinking about this for a while and i just need to pull the trigger on it and yes the answer is yes just do it it happened to you <laughs> absolutely so again if you're new to seeing our podcast, please check us out at raiseupmindset.com. We'd love to hear from you. If you have some particular questions, of course, like and share our, our stuff on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We appreciate yeah, sure, you guys. guys. The more people you share it with, the more we can get an audience, the more we can share it with other people. Yep. And people are just helping people. Yep, yeah. that's what we're doing. So right. thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast, click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again, bye-bye.